All right, guys, um, what I'm going to go over today is something that I consider very simple. But, you know, for those who don't know, now you know. Deep house spaces. Now, quite a few people have said to me, you know, I'm having trouble getting my deep house space. You know, I've tried, you know, silent, I've tried, you know, all these other synths that um, actually are not built for the job. Well, a deep house space is basically, it's basically a donk. Let's be real, it's just basically a donk. And donks are mostly made uh, using a form of synthesis known as FM synthesis, which stands for frequency modulation, which is where you get a sine wave and a carry wave and you do all this stupid stuff with maths and a calculator. Well, not really, but sometimes. Um, and you add all these waveforms together and get each to modulate each other, so you end up with something completely new and different. Uh, but however, it's quite boring and quite a task to do. However, doing a donk sound is actually very simple. I'm just going to walk you through, um, you know, what I got. So I'm just going to show you outright. Um, I've just got a little loop here. I've got a stack of bases. Now in here, I've got a stack, as we can see. Uh, this stack just sounds like this. Pretty simple stack. And the other th one that I've made, which is just a sort of standalone version using FMA, uh, just sounds like this. And together for the sake of it. So that's what those sound like. Now I'm just going to go through them now and I'm just going to create a uh, fresh bass stack because uh, why not? As you can see, I had these uh, bypassed because with these in it, it sort of changes the sound, but I'm going to go through why I did these things here a bit later. So first things first, what you need to use now for this first couple of minutes, I'm going to be using logic plugin sort of skim ahead if you don't use logic. Um, cause I'm going to be doing it with FM8 as well. So first things first, I'm going to load up Logic's native, uh, FM synth, which is this, uh, it is FM1. Now by default, it's already pretty much there. I just usually boost that a bit. I adjust the release depending on, you know, how. How I want it to sound. Uh, that's pretty much all you'll do to your EFM. Uh, even by default, it just sounds almost there. Sounds almost there, uh, but however, I'm going for a thicker sound, so you got to do other things. So that's EFM sort of loaded up and out of the way with. Uh, next thing I'm going to load up is an organ sound. Now, that might sound a bit weird, but um, it actually sort of does work. Uh, so this is the organ I'm using. Very low in volume. Um, to be honest, sometimes I just go through presets. Um, in this case, I am so start here. Uh, that perhaps sounds pretty right. Now adjusting these is think of it a bit like frequency or keys. You know, I am no organ expert. I will say that outright here. Now I'm no organ expert. But I'm going to sort of go through what I usually do to the organ to get it to, you know, where I roughly want it to. But yeah. So I can see at the moment, just by looking at the signal, it's a bit lopsided. So I'm just going to use a bit of panning. And what I'm going to go through is I'm going to go through every setting that this has got. Now, this is a virtual organ fed through, you know, a virtual cab and everything. Uh, it actually, for the job of like sounding, like a fake instrument, um, that's sort of what we want. Now 
Nice thing here is cool. This is a click that you can sort of add to it. I, I really like it because you can make the thing sound really ticky. And you can hear this little click. That's actually sort of to replicate what an organ actually sounds like. Um, so it's pretty cool. You can go with no click. Or you can go with a lot of click. That's sort of cool for like sort of adding a bit of uh, percussion tick or you know what you'd do with a uh, pitch uh, envelope on the synth where you'd add a little envelope to the pitch to add that little click. Uh, that's the sort of thing you can do here to get the click. And you can also use this guy here. So if I put this here. Cool. So that's where I want it. Um, looking at volume, so sort of boost the lows a bit more. All right, now I go through the effects. Uh, let's check what's on. Boost the lows a bit more. Check out the uh, distortion, that's sort of fine. The wire, got no problems with that. Uh, reverb, I'm not really going to mess around with that. Um, I am going to look at this. So see the tonal balance, see the lows panned a bit here and everything. I sort of don't have any problem with that. That's not really doing anything. Uh, random FM, no. So that's pretty much where I want it. Oh, it's, it's about as good as it's gonna get. And um, I'm just gonna add one more software instrument. And uh, yeah. I'm just going to add a sine wave underneath just in case I need a bit more bass because often I find just adding a straight sine is a lot easier than adding extra low end or, you know, adding a warmth or a saturator to get extra low end. I just find that just putting a simple sign. This is EXS24 and by default. It's, it's just a nice sine wave. So I just always move the level here. This affects the velocity, so I always move it. There, so it's you know where I want it to be, and because this is a sub, I'm going to go into the analyzer and just make that a bit sharper. Yeah, let's do that. And actually, before that, yeah, this is just how I do things. So, compressor. And I've already got a little sub bass preset that I just slap on things. Da -da -da -da, sub, sub bass. Let's usually move those around a bit until it's like roughly where I want it sound wise. Now, even though this bebop organ it is moving a bit, and that's uh, partially due to the rotor effects that's inside and you know a few other little bits and pieces that are happening with it um within the plugin i don't really have a problem with this sort of being a bit sort of moving left to right i do have a bit of a problem with it being maybe a bit to the left more than the right but i just even it out with the pan and on here or the new logic i've got a stereo pan which um it's even better because it lets me adjust it, it just gives me a nicer view of what i'm getting at there <laughs> Uh, and the donk, it's still... Now this one here... Back down. I'm just 
adjusting it a bit so it can sound a bit longer. That means when I group these all together, let's create a summing track and that's going to load up the compressor. Uh, set my signal as da, 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 da. where are my kicks going? Plus one. And uh, once again, this is, it's a good thing to load up presets to have your own sort of set of presets. All right, so that's going to be super loud when nothing's on, however. Now the side chain, you can sort of set up how you want. Um, alternatively, uh, you can just go into well, whatever side chain plugins you like. I like LFO tool because um, it's nice. Because down the scope. <laughs> enough playing around with that so that's basically the basics of how you just get your deep house bass started now as you can see on here i haven't really added any eq except for there and that was just to control that sound that i could probably take some low end off uh, because i got a sign here this one here this probably won't have much low end but let's have a look oh it actually does uh, it's, I shouldn't be surprised because FM synthesis, it's all sine waves. So. It's about there. About here. Yeah, that hasn't really got any. is just looking at it i was thinking of turning the um the fat on here the little filter thing it actually sounds pretty cool and pretty nice for sort of boosting up sounds but uh for this i don't think it needs it i'm just gonna transverse it down by 12, just make it super low. So that's the basic, that's, that's just straight logic there, that base. Simple and done. Now this one here, now I've already prepared this beforehand, but I'm just going to initialize it again and start from scratch. I just basically load it out like that just, just because. All right, so new sounds. Now, FMate can be a bit complicated, but it, if you just sort of copy what I'm doing, you'll get away with it. Now you want two carrier waves. So we've got one here, uh, E and F, 
that's the ones I'm going to work with. Uh, F is automatically mapped like this by default. What I want to do is I want to enable E and here I want to blend these together about, let's have a look. About 70, we we'll just call it an even 70. With FM, it's sort of good to round your numbers off to sort of a rough exact. Uh, so I'm just going to look at the envelopes now. I'm just going to adjust the uh, tail of this. And 10 key scaling. Just look at F, drag F out a bit. Now have a look at the uh, mod section. Everything seems fine there. Uh, just go to the operator, turn the key sync on. Cool. And just going to go to the master, turn this voices up. Yeah, that sounds fine. And effects we'll get to later. So we'll go to here, go to the mod section for E. Got E and F right here on the mod, so I'm just gonna Turn this up to two. So I'm up too high. Yep, cool. And that's basically it. Uh, take the voice. Uh, the more detune you put this, the sort of funkier it can sound. It gives that virtual analog sort of sound. It doesn't help putting this up because then it sounds a bit too weird. You can put it up like five or six or ten. And sort of the same with that. And what effects am I going to put on? I am just going to put on a nice shelving EQ. Get the low end up and get some of this high end up. Cool. And just going to look at the master again. Yeah, I like that. It's always nice to just check these things when you're doing a sort of sound design. Uh huh. Amp envelope. Yeah, it seems about right. And I'm just going to go up to the master and transpose it down by 12. That's a bit too low. Go back to 12. That's probably a bit too far out. one and eat it too. 
And this you can sort of like suit to what you want. As you heard, getting the sort of instant sounds pretty easily. As long as the ratio on carrier E was set to two and F, you know, leave F as default. But you play around with the uh, envelopes to get them sort of, you know, long enough so it actually modulates. If it's too short, then it may just sound just like a donk with no tick or it'll, it'll sound a bit weird. But anyway, that's all I did with that. Uh, I put an EQ bump on the last one I did. Yeah, it's just to bring it out a bit. Bit of compression and the side chain. So yeah, that's that's basically it. That's basically how house donks are made, how simply they're made, and how quickly you can make them. Making the character of your own with these sort of sounds, it's like any other genre where a sound sort of becomes a um, staple of the genre. So you get you do your thing by playing in a good melody or a good hook. Uh, the sound design for for basic things like this, I wouldn't stress over. You know about who has the best, you know, deep house donks, who has the best trance kicks. You know, just just good writing is key. Anyway, I uh, hope this was helpful to see you guys, and uh, yeah, peace.